We are reading this evening uh, from the Word of God uh, in the New Testament, the book of Acts, and um, commencing our reading in Acts chapter 3 and reading into Acts chapter 4, uh, page 1098. So um, Acts uh, chapter 3, we want to read from uh, verse 11 through into chapter 4 and verse 12. It's all the one incident. Uh, It begins with the healing by Peter uh, of the lame man that then attracts a crowd and ultimately draws the attention of the religious authorities Uh, to the apostles, and um, they end up uh, being arrested, and Peter and John end up bearing testimony to Christ before the Jewish council that had put Jesus uh, to death, uh, the Sanhedrin. So let's read from verse 11. While he, that is the lame man that has been healed, clung to Peter and John, All the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, men of Israel, Why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us, as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, The God of our fathers glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer murderer, to be granted to you. And you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses and his name by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. And now, brothers, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. But what God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ would suffer, he thus fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and turn again that your sins may be blotted out. The times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord, and that he may send the Christ appointed for you, Jesus, whom heaven must receive until the time for restoring all the things about which God spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets, Long ago, Moses said, The Lord God will raise up for you a prophet like me from your brothers. You shall listen to him in whatever he tells you. And it shall be that every soul who does not listen to that prophet shall be destroyed from the people. You are, uh, sorry, and all the prophets who have spoken from Samuel. And those who came after him also proclaimed these days, You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant that God made with your fathers, saying to Abraham, And in your offspring shall all the families of the earth be blessed. God, having raised up his servant, sent him to you first to bless you by turning every one of you from your wickedness. And as they were speaking to the people, the priests and the captain of the temple and the Sadducees came upon them, greatly annoyed because they were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they arrested them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. But many of those who had heard the word believed, and the number of men came to about 5,000. 
On the next day, the rulers and elders and scribes gathered together in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest and Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of the high priestly family. And when they had set them, that's Peter and John, in the midst they inquired, By what power or by what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are being examined today concerning a good deed done to a crippled man, by what means this man has been healed, let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Amen. There is only one way to go is a statement you and I have heard many times and possibly it is a statement that we have made to someone from time to time. We who live in County Fermanagh and who have been born and brought up here, we love the county and we know our way around the county. But for those who are visitors to the county either on holiday or who are moving in to live here, it is not the easiest county to find your way around if you're not familiar with it. And that, of course, is because of the stretch of water known as Loch Erne, which uh, runs uh, down through the middle of the county. So if someone from Carrick Fergus asked me, how do I reach your church building on the Sligo Road? I would say there's only one way to go. There's only one way to go, and that is through Enniskillen. You have to cross the urn to get onto the Sligo Road and to arrive at our building. Our text tonight is the text for the months of July and August uh, on the calendar that we give out earlier this year. And it tells us there's only one way to go to heaven. There's only one way to go to heaven. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. We have to go back to verse 10 to discover um, who the no other name is, because in verse 10 we're told by the name of Jesus Christ. And to put that in the context of the series of six sermons on the mediator or bridge uh, between a holy God and a depraved humanity, there is no other mediator. There's no other way to get to heaven except via Jesus Christ. People are not going to heaven because of the name or the title, I'm a Protestant, or a Presbyterian, or an Anglican, or a Baptist. People are not going to heaven through the name Catholic or Roman Catholic. People are not going to be in heaven through the name Muhammad, or even Jehovah, as understood by Jehovah's Witnesses and taught by them. There is only one way to go to heaven, 
by Jesus Christ. And if you still have your calendar hanging up in your home, you will notice that um, I um, put in specific words because I couldn't put in the whole section from um, chapter uh, 4 from verse 10 to verse 12. And so we have the words, Jesus Christ crucified, raised, rejected. There is no other name by which we must be saved. And so tonight as we look at the only way to heaven, the mediator Jesus Christ, we want to note those three words uh, from the earlier verses. Jesus Christ crucified, first of all. Then Jesus Christ raised or resurrected. And then Jesus Christ rejected. First of all then, Jesus Christ uh, crucified. We do not go uh, to heaven through Jesus, the good man. Though he was a good man, no one was able to accuse him or to um, prove against him a single sin of thought, word, or deed. Jesus Christ um, was a good man, but we do not go to heaven through him as the good man. Jesus Christ is the worthy example, the best example of a human life that we could ever come across. And uh, he was um, a perfect example of a godly man, of a godly son, of a godly brother, of a godly friend. But his example um, is not the basis upon which we go to heaven. People who were confronted with his example, um, like Peter, ended up saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. People exposed to his example, instead of saying, I can reach his example, realized how far short they fell of his example. We do not go to heaven through Jesus, an outstanding teacher, though he was the best teacher ever. The people of the day themselves said, no man teaches like you do. The scribes and the Pharisees, they're not a patch on you. You teach with authority. You teach with interest. You teach with compassion. You can teach with not with knowledge, but not just knowledge, you teach with the strength of a godly life. And so the ordinary people heard him gladly. Those are all important aspects of the person of Jesus, that he was a good man, that he was a perfect example. He was an outstanding teacher. Uh, but uh, none of those um, aspects of Jesus' life deal with our sin. None of them deal with our sin. Because, and it is our sin which is the obstacle in us and makes it impossible for God to accept you and me uh, into Heaven makes it impossible for you and me to become like Jesus, a good man, or to live up to his example, or to follow his teaching. And that's why um, Peter rightly emphasized on the day on which this miracle was done by him, 
with John by his side. Uh, the fact of sin and then the crucifixion of Christ for the, sin, the forgiveness of sins. Look at what he says in chapter 3 and verse um, uh, from verse, uh, verse 18. But those things which God foretold by the mouth of all the prophets that the Christ would suffer, he has thus fulfilled. Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so the times of blessing may come from the presence of the Lord. You see, Jesus Christ crucified. That's the way to go. That's the way to heaven. And it is by his crucifixion, by the shedding of his blood, by his death for sin, that your sins and my sins may be blotted out or already have been blotted out so that uh, we uh, know um, or can know that we're going to heaven. That's why in our text it's summed up in this way. Nor is there salvation. Salvation from what? From sin. In any other. For there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is no other name. No other way except through Jesus Christ crucified. But then we want to notice secondly tonight, there's, no on, there's uh, only one way to go, and that is Jesus Christ resurrected, or Jesus Christ raised from the dead. Look at chapter 3 and verse 15, where Peter says to the crowd that's gathered after the healing and are interested and uh, surprised by the healing and want to know its source, he says, verse 15, You killed the prince of life, whom God raised from the dead. Whom God raised from the dead. And you see, the resurrection is so important. Not just the death of Jesus, but the death and the resurrection have got to be held together. They're two sides of the coin. You cannot have, if you have the death without the resurrection, then what do you have? Um, well, it would have proved that Jesus um, was completely deceived about himself. Because he said he would rise from the dead. He taught he was God. He taught it is within my own power to lay down my life. And it's with my own power to take it up again. And if Jesus did not take up his life again, then he was not God. He was in fact a deceiver and a liar. And um, if Jesus is not risen from the dead, then uh, God did not accept his sinless life and a sin-bearing death in place of others. And if he's not risen from the dead, what does Paul say in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 17? You are still in your sins. So the resurrection is vital. It's vital to show that Jesus was and is God, uh, who we claim to be, it's vital and essential because it's the proof that God accepted his uh, death. Remember, he was a sinless man. He didn't need to die. He didn't need to die. So if he remained under death, then that meant he wasn't a sinless man. And it meant that our sins, no one's sins, are forgiven 
through Jesus Christ. And so uh, there is only one way to go to heaven. It's through Jesus Christ crucified for our sins, Jesus Christ resurrected as proof that he was who he claimed to be, God, and that he had done what he claimed to do, die for our sins, not needing to die. And so um, we have Jesus Christ then, the only mediator, the only way to go through his crucifixion, not through him being a good man, a good example, or an outstanding teacher. Jesus Christ resurrected as the proof of who he was and what he did. But then we want to notice thirdly this evening, Jesus Christ rejected. Jesus Christ rejected. Because we read in chapter 3 and verse 13, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate. And then verse 14, but you denied the Holy One and the Just One. And it wasn't just that they denied Jesus, they actually asked for a criminal in his place. You remember they shouted Barabbas when Pilate said, who do you want me to release to you, the Christ or Barabbas? And the overwhelming voice was Barabbas, Barabbas, the murderer. And so Jesus Christ was rejected by the Jews. The truth, the reality is, Jesus Christ was rejected then. He is still rejected today. And he will be rejected. There'll be people who will reject him. Indeed, it may be that even uh, mostly he will be rejected by the greater majority of people. But Jesus claimed, was who he claimed to be. He proved himself to be whom he claimed to be. The eternal Son of God become man. That's the truth. But the tragedy is, the tragedy is, that in that day then when Peter spoke, the people were proud. The people were sinful. Uh, they were... Um, self-reliant, um, they thought they were um, acceptable to God, and so they rejected him. They denied him and delivered him up. But you see, brethren, men and women, rejecting Christ is not the way to go to heaven. Indeed, it's the very opposite. It's the way to go to hell is to reject Jesus Christ. Because if he was crucified for our sins and resurrected for our justification so that God would declare us righteous and would declare him to be all that he said he was, and if we reject him, then it's not heaven that such a person is going to. It is rather to the place of rejection for those who have rejected God and Christ to hell itself. As someone wanting to get to our church from Carrick Fergus rejected going through Belfast, uh, sorry, from Belfast rejected, um, uh, wanting to reach our church rejected going through Enniskillen, it's impossible for them to get here. It's totally impossible. Coming from there where they are at, to get here, they've got to go through in a skill. There's only one way to go. And this passage is teaching us tonight from where we are at 
by nature, dead in our sin, liable to the judgment of God, there's only one way to go to heaven. It is through Jesus Christ, crucified, raised or resurrected. And let us not be like those who, to whom Peter spoke who rejected Jesus, but rather, let, but rather let us be like those that we read of um, in the chapter in our reading that many believed, and that day the number of men rose to about 5,000. You see, the person of Jesus Christ always divides people. Always there's a division, either for him or against him. We accept him or reject him. And Scripture says here, as Jesus himself said, there is salvation in no other, for there's no other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. Or to quote how Jesus put it, I am the way to heaven. I'm the truth from heaven. I am the life of heaven. No one comes to the Father. No one comes to heaven except by me. There is only one mediator. There is only one way to go. Men and women, let's make sure that we are those who receive Christ as our Savior from our sins, those who confess Him, those who love Him, those who follow Him, those who obey Him. Because to such, He said, um, you cannot go where I'm going now, but I will come later and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen.